So this article is from MSNBC, and it says, no matter who, Thanks. thank you, oh. uh, no matter who wins the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, America has lost, or so they say. Uh, so it says, this is by Liz Plank, who is an MSNBC opinion columnist. I'm going to read as much of this as I can, um, you know, given my horrible On the title skills. alone, I would be sympathetic to that message, but the rest of this is just it f- completely off the rails. It feels bait and delusional. switch. Yeah, uh, it doesn't feel like I, I get what her what her uh, overall conclusion is, but it feels like the evidence she presents what doesn't is, really line up. What is Miss Plank's overall conclusion? So let's go, let's she, go through. What it. does she think? That uh, we lost? She thinks that if you believe that Amber Heard is guilty, you're uh, perpetuating stereotypes. That's what I found is like a huge part of all of these uh, articles, whether it's about this, whether it's about Carrie Fukunaga, whether it's about the stuff with Stranger Things and the and the sexuality of Will, for instance, they always go back to this concept of like, uh, if you believe this thing that I don't personally believe, mm-hmm. you're enforcing negative stereotypes. Therefore, you shouldn't either believe. It. Maybe they think you can believe it, but they don't think that you should be airing it to the public because it could be harmful to other people mm-hmm. in some uh, nebulous, um, I- unable to prove way. So it says, after weeks of content of contested, contentious testimony, expert witnesses, and cross examination, closing arguments, and the defamation lawsuit over Amber Heard's po- uh, Washington Post op-ed concluded on Friday. In her final statement, Heard became emotional as she described being harassed, humiliated, threatened every single day of the proceedings, which were instigated by her husband, uh, her ex-husband Johnny Depp. Uh, I do agree that she probably was uh, like harassed. Yeah, well, they've and been they've been throwing uh, abuse at her. For sure. Um, Him being creepily charismatic is not instigating. I I disagree with that conclusion. Also, I think his legal team might say you harassed, humiliated, and threatened him every single day that you were married. Yes. So it says the jury is still deliberating, but the Internet's court of opinion has already made up its mind. She's lying. While the TikTok hashtag I stand with Amber Heard has more than 8 million views, Justice for Johnny Depp has 15 billion views. People with love that alliteration. B, with a B. Uh, so as uh, NBC News uh, reporter Kat Tenbarge noted, the internet simply wasn't built for a trial like this. Some of the social media content slamming her has even reportedly been paid for by conservative websites. Uh, I don't know if, uh, let's see, let's, let's click the link and just says, the Daily Wire spent thousands of, uh, of dollars promoting anti-Amber Heard propaganda. Uh, so that's uh, that's their article on on that. But it says uh, uh, the trial is revealing a lot about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, but it's revealing a lot more about us, meaning us, the American people. Why our supposedly progressive culture suddenly obsessed with old sc- is suddenly obsessed with old school misogynistic tropes about lying harlots. How did we go from believing women to cheering their humiliation? See, the problem with that statement is that you're treating women as a monolith. I really wish that there was an alternative article here that was like America lost because if you really fundamentally believe in feminism and the Me Too movement, you would look at Amber Heard and be like, you took something that we built and worked for and destroyed it. I'm not saying that's my view, but like being like, oh, we're obsessed with old school misogynistic traits because we won't believe Amber Heard. I don't really think that's the case. I think this is one person who... Yes clearly has struggled to tell the truth throughout this whole thing. It's not about believing or not believing women. It's about personally not believing this particular woman yeah. that, for most people. And I, I, I hate I mean. that it becomes like a collective all. I find that with a lot of feminist arguments. Yes. Like It's like, well, if you don't believe in all women's or you don't believe in all of this or you don't want to do then you are anti the entire program. And exactly. That's I, I have a huge problem with well, that. Well, and I reached a point when I was younger that I was like, I never really thought of myself as a feminist, but I was definitely like, oh yeah, definitely not. If this is a collective bargaining tool, I don't want to be lumped in with the rest of you. So it says, armchair pundits and comedians have called the trial and its ensuing media circus fun. The experience has been anything but for survivors. Uh, If you're a survivor, like, would you encourage someone, a survivor, I'm guessing they're saying of like sexual violence or uh, a bat, you know, somebody who was in an abusive relationship, would they be following this that closely? Like, why would they? Yeah, I was going to like, whether Uh, the victim is male or female, like if you are in that situation, you haven't processed it, like seems like you shouldn't consume this kind of content too intensely. That yeah. seems like it would be bad for you. It says, this kind of voyeuristic and sensationalistic celebrity treatment further normalizes abuse and undermines victims of intimate partner violence, especially those who happen to be women. Uh, does that, is that what you think that this does? Does this uh, normalize abuse? Uh, no, I disagree. I think that this is a really good insight into how uh, complicated abuse in relationships can be. And I think 
it's strange to hear feminists being like, oh, well, it had to be Johnny's fault. He was older and more wealthy, and he's a man. So he is the only one in that relationship who could perpetrate abuse. When, like, doesn't that seem kind of anti-women's abilities? Like, women's women are just as likely to be abusive. Abuse just looks different. Exactly. I think that we have progressed in a society where, like, we can recognize the signs of physical abuse, but it's much harder for us to understand what verbal and emotional abuse look like. And I think, I, I mean, I think we can all agree Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, terrible couple, bad for each other. Neither one of them is like, th- ooh. Thank you. Uh, is particularly, you know, great in this scenario. But it does seem like she went above and beyond to, let's all remind us, that this isn't a domestic violence trial. This is a defamation trial. And yes. she took steps to defame Johnny Depp's character, at which point he lost uh, revenue. Yes. So whether or not there should be an abuse I mean, it, uh, investigation is different. Yeah, the the issue of abuse, it it really and like adjudicating how how guilty either party was of abuse, mm-hmm. it does unfortunately come down to whether it was physical or not because only physical abuse is a, a crime. You can't. Which we're going to talk about. It's in the not Carrie, a crime to psychologically yeah. abuse someone. That's not true, though. Like, you can get uh, cited. You can get a restraining for order if you're getting divorced and your spouse is harassing you. If they're stalking you, those are forms of yeah, harassment and stalking and um, but, abuse. But, like, the way that she verbally abused him, for instance, uh, called him names and degraded him verbally, like, that's not a crime. And so I think that's why I people still don't argue that it actually it is People a crime. still don't see it as equivalent. I'm yeah. not saying it's equivalent, because of that. but I'm saying that, like, we... I feel like there are a lot of camps in the Me Too movement who are struggling to know what to do with Amber Heard. And I can't imagine. Because At the very least, the people in this article don't seem to see They it don't know how to handle yeah. it. Because they're, in a way, that this piece is kind of just uh, projecting their belief system onto the reader yes where they say how did we go from believing women to cheering their humiliation there's no we like we didn't change our minds on anything and we were never at the point where we like at least us three here we're never saying believe all women we never said that no we were level-headed about the issue the entire time so here's, They're the ones who are dogmatic about it. Here's this paragraph. So it says, uh, Wagatwe uh, Wanjuki. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Just I apologize if I'm not. Uh, an anti-violence advocate who helps communities prevent and respond to sexual abuse believes that the trial's reception is a symptom of a culture that still needs to be educated on the complicated realities of intimate partner violence. We need to show and encourage a better way to talk about abuse, abusers and victims, she said. We do not teach people what domestic violence is, so we are... We don't. We, we don't teach us. Uh, I, I don't know what that means uh, that we don't. I think um, this is weird because this columnist Plank is quoting this person who's saying we need to have a better understanding of intimate partner violence while saying really only women. I mean, like, it seems like the implication here is that she doesn't really believe that Johnny Depp could be a, vi- victim. a victim or at least as much of a victim of intimate partner well, violence as Amber Heard. It's puzzling to me that they're saying the complicated realities of intimate partner violence or of domestic abuse. But then later on, they go on to say that there is no such thing as mutual abuse. That was what I wanted to get to next. Okay, You're so they making literally... It as reductive as possible. They, they literally claim that there's no such thing as, as mutual, like which is literally the hallmark of like everything we've talked about here yeah. has been talking about how this is uh, very clearly an example of two people that were mutually awful for one another and they claim, they try to claim this article that there's no such thing as being mutually abusive in a relationship because of power dynamics. But uh, mm-hmm. what it says here, they do point out that he does have the, the horrible text that he sent to Paul Beck where he talked about doing right. vile things to her after she was uh, after she had passed away, and then there's also that he called her like a worthless hooker. Uh, so he, it's not it's not like he's clean. He said plenty of awful things, but you know uh, the the point is down here. I, I do love this part where it says the trial also revealed that Depp that Depp spent a lot of time with Marilyn Manson, a man who has been accused of rape by several women it's and who is also herring. suing them for for defamation, which is a very clear like so you're guilty by associates. Like so does that make Oprah guilty of everything? Harvey Weinstein yeah I was gonna say everyone who ever went to Epstein Island Uh, exactly I feel like this is like them saying like 
as you can see because by this friendship he is a part of the patriarchal abusive man club and they got make- together and had a vote and was like good idea johnny gold mm-hmm. star for abusing amber heard like it doesn't it seems like someone who doesn't understand the reality of rebu- abusive relationships it says ultimately the jury will let me make sure i didn't uh oh they they they, they call into question his like snacking and grinning and the way he taught in the way he carried himself during the trial which me and you even me and, and you is, pointed it out it is annoying and he is getting away with it because people are on his side that, like it's true uh, it, it does like i guess uh, my question would be like what is he supposed to act like would it would, would it would i like it more if he faked being uh i, I overtly... think he's faking something jovial as a uh, tactic you don't think that he's like actually him. being jovial because he no. doesn't care you think he's faking it for because he's charismatic i would say like i would well, i don't know what i would rather if i if i would rather he be jovial if that's actually him than faking being solemn and not believing it like people don't believe it when her well, was crying and it's one of those things where like if you were in court you really don't know how you'd react we don't yeah, know why he's doing the things absolutely. he's doing we don't know why she does the things she's doing it's fun in like a soap opera kind of way mm-hmm. to be like did you see her hold that tissue and perhaps she faked mm-hmm. crying yeah but you know ultimately it's important to remember that like while tiktok is scrutinizing the breaks in the courtroom the jury is being asked to consider what's being presented, yeah. which is much more factual based. It says, ultimately, the jury will decide whom they believe is telling the truth, but I'm less interested in whether Hurt is a liar and more interested in why so many people are gleefully invested in the idea that she might be. I think there's a lack of self-awareness here mm-hmm. about what the culture of Me Too and what the culture of uh, uh, gender relations in this country have done to each uh, to ourselves in the past four to five years. Mm-hmm. I don't think they realize that this is a culmination yeah. of a lot of that behavior. I think we were even talking about that multiple times before just that we found the uh, amber heard as the one woman that yes. people feel permitted to criticize and dunk on right now and no one is willing to be intellectually honest and just ask ask why that is why are people so gleefully invested in the idea that amber heard is a liar do you want to hear my theory on this I think it's because Me Too set off cancel culture. I mean, cancel culture already existed in a lot of ways, but the connection between like uh, examining someone's romantic relationship and being able to cancel them for those for actions, something they, they couldn't go to jail for so complicated. Yeah. Um, and in this case, I think that it's not that people want it to be like a return of like backwards old school man club values where we blame the hysterical women like i don't think that's it at all i think what's happening is that people want to see a story arc where someone who we definitely know was wronged gets to kind of come back we are actually rooting for a cancel comeback cancel culture comeback story and i think that that is you know why it's important to keep in mind that like johnny depp is not a completely innocent party like it does not sound like a healthy relationship on either front and but he didn't necessarily deserve to have his livelihood hurt in the way that it was. And you, we've talked about the idea of the imperfect victim. That has been brought up several times mm-hmm. here uh, in that context. But it says, uh, b- they also make this weird comparison. Where they say, being uh, wrongly accused of rape is astonishingly rare. In fact, it rarely ever happens. And the articles they, they connect to, to more are, are links to things about Christine Blasey Ford and like the Kavanaugh trial. Uh, it no, says, like, I hate when people do that. Like, all you have to do is cite a study. Yep. You know what I mean? Like that makes you look weak as an opinion writer. The The majority of sexual assault is not reported most of the time. And I'm guessing that they don't point out the fact that that's, uh, that male rape is almost never. Uh, well, it's you too know late what's now. crazy? I said the word. When Sorry, you talk R-word. about R-word. R-word. Uh, male R, yeah. and especially because a lot of it happens in like federal prisons, prisons yep. you'll have people who on the outside would say, believe all women say, well, the power balance is different there. So we can't really treat it the same way. Which is crazy to Everything me. Everything is power balances. Everything is power balance, people. and only in some circumstances where we want to examine it. It right? ends up becoming a huge part of the... I think what's hard is like with male R in prisons, people don't want to examine... Sorry, Brett. Yeah. No, that's, that's, you're supposed to say that. I, I wasn't supposed to say the word. People don't want to have to examine like how male power dynamics work because yeah. it would confront a lot of the ideas. This is my theory. Uh, on how men view and interact with women it would yep. upset the balance that like the me too culture has created so it says to an outsider heard in depth's relationship seems tumultuous volatile and at times even violent but calling their dynamic mutual abuse as it was during the trial perpetuates the same kind of stereotypes that keeps abusers in control they always want to call back to uh promoting stereotypes because it means that i can negate anything you say and if it you- also means we can 
shift the conversation from the particular, which is this trial, into the general. And they love the... One of the things that I struggle with when we're talking about a lot of these topics is I don't like talking about generalizations. I want to talk about specific instances. In this case, it's this case between them. Uh, in our later one with Kerry Fukunaga, it's very specific examples of his relationships with women that he worked with. Uh, I hate the idea of addressing whole communities mm -hmm. because it's so general that it borders on meaningless because you can't get anywhere because the conversation can be shifted so easily. So it says... Uh, well, I also think that like not everything is representational of a larger picture, right? Yes. Like this whole article is... Well, based on this one trial, uh, trial, America has lost. Like nothing happens to either one of us or Plank, who wrote this article, if the jury rules any particular direction of this case. Like none of it matters, really. It is interesting to see how legal precedent is developed, and it is curious for us to see people who are held on pedestals have to defend their actions. Yeah. But this doesn't mean it's symbolic of everything in the world. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are not a thermometer necessarily for American culture, especially since they're from such an elite skewed yeah. part of culture. That was, I mean, I've made that point before. I was like, in the end, I don't really care because this doesn't, thank you. In the end, this doesn't change anything for regular men who get accused of something they didn't do because Johnny Depp had gazillions of dollars to fight this in court. Right. The average guy doesn't have the money to do that. And it doesn't mean that the next guy who has like a crazy girlfriend isn't abusive. Exactly. Right? Like exactly. it works both ways. Yep. It says, but calling their dynamic mutual abuse as it was during the trial perpetuates the same kind of stereotypes that keeps abusers in control. It's dangerous because it doesn't exist. Uh, when Juki said about the term at the core of an abusive relationship is a power imbalance that is created and sustained by a pattern of domination and control. I would like to hear an example of one where the, like, do they believe that that is, means that there's only ever men in it, control? It means they think in a... It, this just shows how, how ignorant they are of just, like, how relationships work. Yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're actually asserting that in domestic abuse cases, there has to be a bad guy and a victim. Yep. And it's nothing... There, you can have no other nuance beyond that. That, to me, is like the... That's the... That's like the dumbing down of America. Like it's, it's years of watching television and not actually understanding how the world works. Like years people of sitting in your house, yes, getting door who, who have no idea what it's like to actually interact with other people mm -hmm. and understand that the world is far more complicated than such simple dynamics to explain our relationships between us and the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like I, said, I don't think it changes anything because Johnny Depp can fight it. We cannot, or I can like, if something like this happened to me, I'd never be able to fight this in court. I don't have a million to uh, $10 million to fight something like this in court and the average dude on the street does not uh, have, have that type of money to fight something like this in court nor does the average woman if this is true have the uh, have the money to, to fight it in court so you kind of understand where they're coming from right. when they make these accusations it just doesn't make it right to I do. would argue that the right like the average person doesn't necessarily like it's not going to be common for the average person to go through a defamation lawsuit exactly I would also argue that if you were to be sued for defamation, the stakes would not be this high. You mm. wouldn't sue someone for $50 million nope. and be countersued for $100 million. Let's remember that this these two people exist in an elite part of society that has phenomenal wealth and that, of course, brings more interest to the case. So, so they said the public humiliation of herd will only make it uh, make uh, victims more afraid to come forward. No matter who wins this lawsuit, it feels like we've lost already. So I would ask the people who are victims to look at uh, the things Amber Heard has said and done and ask if that's somebody you want to be held in the same regard at. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. if you're a victim of domestic violence, male or female, do you want to look at the things Amber Heard has said, that Amber Heard has done, the way she's behaved, and see her as a shining example of what you yourself have also gone through? Yeah. I don't think you would want to do that, nor should you want to associate with someone in that camp. Well, and also, do we need to save Amber Heard, right? Like, yeah. do we need her to have a redemption story? Do we need her to you know and somehow be forgivable and empathetic which i think you you know it's up to the individual to decide whether or not they can see sort of the challenges in everyone's lives right but like i don't necessarily think that like it, to the letter of the law if we are examining defamation did she do something specifically to damage johnny yeah. depp's uh reputation that resulted in financial loss yes like mm -hmm. and that's why it's hard to remember that like this article is making it about abuse and of course that does contend to like it speaks to the nature of their relationship but if you were to take it away at the end of the day did she agree to sign an op-ed 
did she agree to write an op-ed about their relationship in a way that was not necessarily true and also intentionally meant to damage him yeah. like that's what's hard like this isn't actually a domestic violence trial it's not their divorce settlement like yep. this is something else and we have to keep in mind that like this is not representational of how we as a culture think of abuse victims it's how we regard toxic relationships and defamation mm -hmm. yeah basically like what the person who's, who's writing the article is saying is that amber is being held up as an example for for other victims of abuse saying like if you speak out then you're gonna get tarnished in the public eye you're right gonna get like and i i'm so tired of people who are advocates for me too which like if that's your prerogative what like go for it but i'm tired of them using this well you're accusing me of being a hysterical woman you're not taking me seriously because of stereotypes i'm tired of this narrative like maybe you should take some time and reflect on the people that you are defending is this the mm -hmm. person that you want to tie your movement to yeah. because you know, based on evidence alone and the way other people who have been close to her and who've been advocates for this movement have reacted, like, no, mm -hmm. pick someone else. Like, we don't need to save Amber Heard. Yep. She did what she did. It's time to move on. And I think that they will both end up coming back. I do believe that she will really? end up. I, I believe that I, I know he will come back. come back. I think she will work smaller stuff. I think she'll end up back on TV. Uh, she'll work smaller uh, TV. TV or independent productions. I, I don't know if she'll be a movie star, but I, I do think he will have a comeback. They, they talk about this here. They talk about the industry is very forgiving almost to a fault sometimes because it's a business oriented uh, <clears throat> industry. Uh, yeah, well, well that, that that's it. Uh, or Robert Downey. Ju they, they mentioned Robert Downey Jr. had his problem. You know, he won his Oscar right at the time all this stuff was happening. Like the industry, if they can make money off you, mm -hmm. they will use you. Her name is going to hold a lot of value, at least for the first thing she does after that <laughs> trial yeah. is going to be like, holy crap. Also, let's be realistic. I'm 95% convinced that she has Elon Musk's baby. And that tells me that he's funding her lifestyle. Perfect. So She'll be does fine. Does she even really need to work? Probably no, not. Probably not. Uh, super chats. There were super chats. Yes, there were. Let's see. Hava Owen said, what up, guys and gals? Time for another hit show. Yes, Aww. it is. How's it going, Hava? Thank you for being the first super chatter. We appreciate that. Haley Legg sent $5 with a little gif of like a pair lifting weights. <laughs> Keep it up. Which is cute. I, I can't tell if that's it's, it's a comment on our physique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, Nate said, I think the reason this country is so obsessed with the depth heard thing is that people want to see real justice and we haven't seen that in a while real justice is refreshing maybe just the fact that it's in a courtroom and not happening just on social media mm -hmm. is enough to like get people excited about it that they're like look mm -hmm. they're not just smearing each other on uh, on twitter they're smearing each other in a courtroom well and it's not their agent and pr person said this to the studio that works with this person and then you know like it's it's something that is much easier to follow and is sort of a neutral ground. It's out of Hollywood. It's in Virginia. That's uh, it's it's very weird being like right over here. Is uh, that because of the Washington Post being their headquarters? Their servers where it was posted from are in Virginia. Got There's it. also some benefits I've heard to like the defamation law here. Hmm. Yeah. And there was one more, I believe. Neil Sa Sawyer said, "How." Has no one called this whole fiasco <laughs> the turd herd around the world? <laughs> I mean, I've heard it called a lot of things, but that's a first. That is that's a that clever. is a very good. Somebody should put that in a shirt. Somebody <laughs> should put that in a shirt. All right, all right. So we're gonna. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.